What up, players? Warboss to help in this mug. Welcome to our wrap-up video of how to paint the Chaos Exalted Champion. Look at this guy. Doesn't he look great? I'm so pleased with how he came out. Look at the metallics on that axe head, the metallics on his helmet, the fur trim on his his cape there. Everything looks great. So the paints you're going to use are Vallejo's Liquid Metallics, silver, and gold. You also want to have some rubbing alcohol nearby to clean your brushes when using these paints because they are very, very tricky. You're also going to need Zandri Dust, Rakarth Flesh, and a good dry brush. I use Citadel's medium dry brush for most of my, most of my uh, miniature painting that requires it. I think he came out great, you guys. I think he looks beautiful. This is for a commission, and um, I hope you like it. If you'd like to commission me for a project and see uh, how I do it on a tutorial, then please feel free to email me at warbosstastestudios at gmail.com. And uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you gain some pleasure out of watching it. Laters! All right, players, let's continue. Let's finish up, actually, with our Chaos Exalted Hero today. Uh, we're really just going to focus on the fine fine details of this model now. So what I've got here is I've got the Vallejo Liquid Gold series and they are fantastic. Fantastic colors. Synthetic resin and metal pigment. Um, stir well before use. Oh, thanks by the way to Doc Eon who had suggested that um, one of the reasons why the Gehenna's Gold was not was not so good was because the uh, the pot had been sitting for a while and I needed to really give it a good shake so <laughs> I'm sorry there's uh, nothing vulgar going on here we're just shaking our paint bottles and yeah that is beautiful so I've always really liked the Vallejo liquid gold series more than the uh, Games Workshop ones it's, ever since I, I used it for the first time on my on my horse the War Master model just it, it looks so realistic that it's just really really good so uh, because of the, uh, the the chemical composition of the paint and uh, I'm, I'm not really sure if it's a oil or a what is it synthetic resin and metallic pigment I don't really know what that means, but all I know is that if you if you don't clean your brush properly after using this, then uh, it's going to mess you up. So, rubbing alcohol is really really good. It's different from your regular acrylic paints. You you won't just be able to dip it into water, which I've learned uh, in the past. I mean, just look how, look how nice and natural and realistic and beautiful that looks. The other gold area is the trim here on the leg armor. And finally, the dagger. I guess not finally, you've got some trim on the shoulder piece there. And you've got the chaos symbol here on the chest plate. Okay, now finally the dagger. All right. Look at that. That's terrific. Look at the way the, the light just picks up off of the helmet. And that is with just one application. There's no need to go back. The tricky thing with Games Workshop golds are that you really have to 
um, go back over them with uh, another color, specifically Rune Feng, Rune Feng Steel, to create the illusion of light catching off of it. But yeah, I love Vallejo Liquid Gold. It's not for everything. It's not for every single kind of gold. Uh, recently I did an Iron Hands commission. If you remember looking at the Vanguard veterans off of that one, the light picked up much better on um, a kind of, I guess, uh, Rune Lord Brass was the color that I used for that one. And it just worked better for those models because I didn't want the, uh, the gold to, to pop out as much as it does with this Chaos model. So uh, you want to, like I said, pick your applications. The next color we're going to use is silver from Vallejo's Liquid Silver line. Again, because I haven't used this paint in a while, we're going to give it a good shake. Yeah, and like I said, you want to keep your rubbing alcohol or whatever nearby if you're going to use it to clean your brushes in between colors like I am. Now when I'm painting this highlight, what I'm doing is I'm building from, I'm just kind of going over the Rune Fang steel, and I'm trying to pick out the edges, but I'm also feathering to create this kind of edge highlight look. When you get to the, the blade here, I'm going to feather from the edge of the blade inwards. Oops. Like that. We're going to do the same thing with this axe here. The silver is so bright as it is that you really want to choose where you're gonna apply it before you you just start slapping paint on your model. Now moving on to the backs of the axes. Again, we're starting at the edge of the blade to create the illusion that it's seeing a lot of work. Then we're going to feather the bottom, just very gently edge the top. What I'm going to do now is very simply use the very tip of my brush to paint chips in the armor. And uh, you've already got some good chips from before, your Rune Fang Steel. So what I'm doing is I'm finding the Rune Fang Steel chips and I am just working within them. For those of you who've ever painted a metal model and then accidentally dropped it, you remember that unsightly silver chip and we're just kind of recreating that effect right now. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to very lightly find where the light is hitting the chainmail and on the upper areas to show where the light source is coming from, we are going to drag the, f the flat part of our paintbrush. So I'm not starting with the tip. If you kind of jab the tip in, you're gonna be putting the paint into the recesses. I'm kind of working from the flat side and dragging my way down. You don't want too much of this. It's not elven steel. It's not mithril silver, it is basically just the light catching off of this dark and dirty chainmail. 
So you want to see dark shadows at the bottom and um, transitioning up to where the light is catching it at the upper areas. All right, and there you have it. That is the, that is all you have to do to pick out the details of this model. It is a, this is, I'm pretty proud of it. I think this is a, a Warmaster standard. It's got great highlights. It's got the, um, all of the detail you want in a showpiece figure. It is uh, really my highest quality that I can produce, I think. And uh, I'm glad you guys were along for the ride. You'll notice, oops, good thing it's in fine cast. You'll notice that uh, I cleaned off the mold line over here on the sword, so uh, I repainted over with Rackarth flesh and, what is it, Palette Witch flesh. So what I'm gonna do is go back over it with known oil. It's not really something you have to do. Oh, I have to leave my brush here for the cleaning that with my rubbing alcohol. It's not, like I said, something you have to do because it should have been done earlier in the video when I said um, but when you use known oil you want to just kind of hit the worst trouble areas and leave the leave the highlights where they should be hitting the sides and the front and then the sides and the back there we go everything else is how it should look fur I forgot the fur oops all right, so the last thing, I promise, Zandri Dust. We're going to take Zandri Dust and we're going to make a uh, woolly, furry kind of effect. I'm using the old Citadel medium dry brush. And I'm going to take some paint right out the pot. Uh, and I'm going to wipe most of it off. You could do this on, on a napkin. The reason I'm not mixing it with water is because as a dry brush, uh, I've found that using the, the paint right out of the pot helps to keep it from getting diluted unnecessarily. Okay, what we're doing is we're just gonna, again, go at an angle and drag the brush down. You can do this with a regular brush if you're just using the flat side of it. I found that having a good dry brush nearby really helps though. Ah, I can't believe I almost forgot. I was like, okay, what do I need to do in this video? Metallics and something else. What was it? I couldn't remember. Okay, the second highlight color is going to be Rackarth Flesh. Again, we're wiping the excess off very easily. Dragging it down the fur. And there you have it. I love the way this turned out because you can see the uh, you can see the texture of the fur. Having a good dry brush makes it pop really nicely, and then the texture and the of the fabric looks really good. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this, and stay tuned for the next video.